Hello, everyone. I'm Melinda Heinrichs, the Executive Director of the Foundation for Madison's Public Schools. The foundation is celebrating its 20th year in 2021. And during our time horizon in history, we've raised 27 million and more on behalf of Madison Public Schools, thanks to generous community members like you. Some of the programs that we offer that you may be familiar with include a principal experience, which will occur on October 26th later this year. Circle of Friends, our annual celebration bringing together our public schools in the community, our adopt a school program, our school endowment grants, a wide range of fiscal agency services. During the last year, thank you all for stepping up and helping us with our COVID crisis response. Through that, we also innovated new programs such as our teacher supply program, our Madison Public Schools Friends and Alumni Network. And lastly, we created a 501c4 called Schools Make Madison Advocates, which led the Vote Yes to Invest campaign in support of the $350 million MMSD Future Ready Referenda campaign. So welcome. Our work continues into 2021 in terms of advocacy. So we are thrilled to have with us today Maya Pearson, who will run for the Board of Education during the general election on April 6th, unopposed. But we wanted to give you a chance to get to know her better and some of what's on her mind as she goes into that Board of Education service. But let me stop for a moment and let my dear colleague Mo Cheeks introduce himself, give Maya an opportunity to introduce herself, and then we'll get into some questions. So Mo, over to you. Thanks, Melinda. Um, <clears throat> thank you all for tuning in. Um, my name is Mo Cheeks. I am really, I'm, a, uh, I'm, I'm proud to be the founding board president for the Schools Make Madison Advocacy um, uh, Organization. I'm a past board member of the Foundation for Madison Public Schools, also previously served on the Madison City Council. Um, and uh, was, was a tutor in our schools for several years. Um, so really, really proud of that work. Um, that's, that's enough on me. Let's get to Maya. Maya, do you want to introduce yourself briefly? Yeah, yeah, of course. I wasn't sure. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Maya Pearson, and um, I am running for the seat one, which, um, well, currently, even though the last board meeting was for Gloria Reyes was um, last week, but um, she's still currently in that seat. Um, but that is for seat one, and I am a Madisonian at heart. Um, born and raised here on Madison South Side. Um, I currently um, am working as the director for a nonprofit called Rise, um, which we fight for tuition free college. Um, and so definitely my day job is education, my evening job, it will be education. <laughs> my kids are also education, everything's education, right? Um, so yeah, I'm definitely happy to be here today. That's awesome, thank you. Um, so just wanna ease into a little bit of discussion here. Um, do you wanna talk, a, you, you mentioned being born and raised here in Madison. Do you wanna talk a little bit about your upbringing? Sort of where did you grow up, what neighborhood, what, what was life like growing up here? Yeah, absolutely. So I was born um, at St. Mary's. <laughs> and we wanna go into details. <laughs> um, Day one. Yeah, yeah, so I was born and raised on a South Side for real. Um, and I was raised in like off of Park Street. So the area um, by Walgreens, if anyone knows that, um, on that side near Penn Park. Um, growing up um, in my neighborhood during that time was that we really had a pretty close knit neighborhood. Um, you had all the different families that lived there that knew each other. Um, and, you know, we had all the kids there and, you know, the older folks living there um, who would help us um, take care of us. We would go to before the Boys and Girls Club, it was South Madison Neighborhood Center. Um, and, you know, David Smith, uh, Pastor David Smith was the director at the time. Um, but we had a lot of different people who were working in the schools, also working in the community at the Neighborhood Center. 
Um, and so for me, community has always been a big part of my life. Um, you know, from the old folks making sure that, you know, feeding all the kids in the neighborhood to um, having tutors and um, having folks to help with like our sports, like track and basketball. So um, it was definitely a pretty close knit um, community. I'm still living in South Madison, raising my children here. Um, I find it um, very important that they also have that sense of community that I also was raised around. Um, because it definitely, you know, made you a stronger person on um, being able to be connected to so many different people. So, yeah, that's that's where I grew up. And, um, you know, I grew up in an activist household. So my grandma was definitely hit in the streets. Um, they're from Florida, but um, they came here for a better life. Um, and mm. still, you know, it's interesting because I, I talk to my grandma about this all the time. It's like, you left the South, right, during a time of like the, the late 50s, 60s um, for, you know, to have better opportunities. And then yet you come here and you still have to fight for certain opportunities. Um, so it's definitely one of those things that um, recently she even mentioned, yeah, I'm still fighting. So <laughs> um, yeah, we all understand these things. So yeah. What was, um, talk about the importance of the close-knit community, what was your public school experience like? Yeah, so I went to um, Franklin, I went to Randall, and then I went to um, James C. Wright, and then I went to West, so that was my track. Um, public education for me, um, like when I'm saying like, you know, my grandma came here, she brought my mom here. My mom was like five, I think when they moved to Wisconsin. Um, and that meant like my mom also went through like our schools here and actually went uh -huh. through Franklin. <laughs> Didn't go to Randall, but um, went through Franklin and such. So, um, and I think she went to like Capitol High, which doesn't exist anymore. Um, but anyways, the same things that my grandma was like fighting for the, are like the same things my mom was fighting um, for and with are now the similar things that I'm also fighting for and with, um, with our public schools. And it's all about equity, right? Um, and so really like three generations of my family has literally been doing the same work, the same fight, the same um, you know, advocacy around making sure that we have equitable schools for all of our kids, um, making sure that we have more teachers of color. It's interesting that that conversation is still being had even when my grandma was, when my mom was growing up. Um, so really, you know, many years of this happening. Um, so I say that to say that, you know, going through Franklin and Randall, definitely my experience, I mean, they're great schools, right? Um, we know that they're some of the best schools. However, when it comes to equity, um, not so much. Um, and so for me, it's always a double, a double edged sword because on one hand, I had an amazing experience as a student, right? As a student who um, like was really bright, was able to be challenged in ways. But then on the other hand, um, as a black student and as a black girl, having the experience of, you know, well, is she smart enough? Um, like, are we gonna allow her into um, kindergarten early, even though she's cognitively there, but, um, you know, and not being able to go, but other students with similar scores, you know, being able to go earlier. Um, and then you have like the other side of just, you know, my family was not a, a wealthy family, not well off, um, we were normal. Um, low income family at the time with my mom because she was a student, single parent. Um, so really it was the, you know, doing really well. And then on the other side, you know, being a black girl in our schools. So um, it's two sides to that for me. Um, and I think it gets at, you know, how we look at Madison as a whole, the tale of two cities is definitely real when you are a black child in our schools today. So that's how I would say my public school experience. I I loved it, but then I also really, really had some, some struggle with it. Um, yeah. yeah, thank you um, for, 
for being so direct about that. Um, how would you say that your experience, both the things that you loved and the things that you struggled, how, how will that inform and guide your your service on the on the board of ed? Yeah, so I've had like I've had a when I think about it, I've really had a bunch of different experiences at our school. It wasn't just only in one way. Um, so I was an advanced student. Um, I did um, attend advanced learning classes. I was like taking AP classes in high school. Um, but for me to be able to do that, my mom had to actually strongly advocate for me to be able to do that, right? That's not the reality for a lot of our students um, and in, on both sides. So it's not the re reality necessarily that you know, some of our students are able just to be placed in those in those classes, right? Um, and then the other side is like, some of the children aren't, they, they don't have the advocates piece to be able to advocate for them to make sure that they're placed in there, right? Um, and so really, I think that that experience um, definitely informs like how I like view the board and the work that I'll be definitely doing on the board is because I, I've been part of both sides, right? Um, also, too, I think, you know, as a mother of a child with disabilities, um, well, I wouldn't say disabilities, but disability, um, in a way of like, you know, IEPs, right, because you have to, to have a child to have IEP, there has to be some kind of disability there, right? Um, you know, having to go through that process definitely is one that um, I definitely bring to the board, because I actually if living this process when we're talking about, um, you know, how we can make children, like make sure that children are being educated, make sure that children are just being placed on IEPs or not just being placed um, in discipline uh, and, and, and really looking at our discipline, um, our discipline rules and such like that. So I think that also helps as well, um, like on what I can um, articulate for um, being on the board. Um, I think to, like there's just there's just so many different things. I, I mean, I really could keep on talking about it. And I really could just you know keep on going down a list if I wanted to. But I, I do think that you know being um, from Madison, um, being part of three generations of MMSD students, um, being a parent, current parent of children who attend MMSD, and having all these multifaceted experiences definitely. Um, help with how I'm informed and how I guide my work on the board. And I really just see <clears throat> like the core for me are just children, making sure that all of our kids, and I think sometimes, you know, some people, and I'm not saying this board or anything, just in general, when people are elected to office, they lose sight of what that, like what, what their purpose is on there. Um, and for me, it's just children, making sure all of our kids are being adequately educated and feeling as though that their experience at our schools are good and that they feel like, you know, I was invested in by Madison schools. Now I want to invest in Madison schools. Um, and so that definitely keep that in mind. Uh, that's excellent. <laughs> what, um, um, I have a handful of other questions, but before we get into, before I give it back to Melinda, what would you, is, is there anything um, uh, at the top that you'd like the community to know about you, just personally or professionally, just like uh, think anything you want people to know? Um, I'm not exactly sure about that one. I feel like I'm pretty open. Um, I will say that I am an introvert. So this will definitely be interesting. <laughs> um, I mean, if you Google me, like my Pearson, you'll bring up all of my track records. <laughs> yeah, basketball yeah. records. I'm not that old, but uh, you still will see um, that kind of, um, those kind of things that are on the internet I don't know I just I thought it was funny you know when I googled myself the other day I was just like oh wow I see all my track records on the internet so yeah I don't know just something funny that's great that's so good uh, that's awesome 
Uh, Melinda, do you want right. to take that? Uh, switching gears just a little bit. Uh, so our 2021 advocacy program will focus on helping MMSD recover from COVID. And coming in, what do you see as some of the biggest challenges as the district works with the community and the foundation to recover? And maybe what are some of the biggest opportunities that COVID, you know, what is there a silver lining that might dr drive some opportunities for us? Yeah, I think that, you know, I've been, I, I've said this before, um, and I think that we all kind of understand this. I think that we are at a very um, interesting point in our, our school's history is that we are really able to reimagine, like really reimagine the way in which we educate our kids. Um, I think, you know, COVID is definitely one of those things that have been very unfortunate, um, you know, I miss my grandma. <laughs> I'm really close with my grandma, but you know, now she's fully vaccinated. So I can definitely like go hug her soon, I hope. But you know, um, the realities like COVID has basically excavated the realities of our schools, right? But then at the same time, being able to go online, you know, and be creative in that way to like make sure that our kids are getting educated when we are looking to go back into schools, like we have that opportunity to completely change like how we have been operating. Um, and I think that that in itself um, is, you know, the biggest opportunity <laughs> for our schools really to reimagine and, and do it in a way that includes all of our stakeholders, right? So it includes our children, it includes our parents, it includes our community, it includes, um, you know, the city, it includes so many different folks um, and really look at it as how can we make our schools better and not perpetrate the same things that have been happening um, and not allowing it, like being intentional, not allowing it to come back, you know? Because I think that it can be very easy to slip back into our old ways. Um, and so my hope is that, you know, as we recover from COVID, that we really truly take this time to be intentional. And when I say truly, because I think that sometimes we can, um, it's really easy to kind of be surface level and not really like get deep down to root causes of the issues that we've been facing as a district. Um, but we have the opportunity now. And I'd, I'd, I really, really, really hope that we, we do do that. Um, and so that would be my answer. Great. <laughs> well, friends, we have kind of a lightning round of uh, lighter questions. Some of them come kind of silly uh, to run past Maya, but I think it'd be really interesting if you were open, you know, a year into your board service to come back and talk with you about what does the experience look like? Was it what you expected? Um, and, you know, maybe even revisit some of the same questions. I think that would be really awesome to hear from you um, down the road. So, okay, here are these hard hitting questions for you, Maya. <laughs> Starting with, what is your favorite television show? So, I, <clears throat> I don't, <laughs> I don't watch American television very often. Um, so, if I say a show, you guys probably will not know, but um, my favorite television show. Let me see. I watch a lot of Korean dramas. I watch a lot of like Bollywood. I watch a lot of dramas from Africa. So I am all over the place. Um, but if I was to choose like an American show or um, something that people could relate to, um, The Handmaiden. Or you could just tell us your favorite. Let, yeah. let people Google it. I know, but I just I help us learn. You know, <laughs> okay, so like I would say Handmaiden's Tale because I was just talking to my daughter, like I'm waiting for the next season. I've been waiting for the next season for years and I am like really angry because <laughs> like, I really want to get the next season. But um, my other dramas that I like really enjoy are like Boys Over Flowers, which is a Korean drama. Okay. Um, I really, there's a drama that I really love right now that is probably topless. It's called Penthouse. Um, and that is also Korean drama. Um, 
Yeah, so those are like some of my top list ones that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so I, of course, the natural uh, next question is like, what's a favorite book? But instead sort of, you know, maybe something even that you've read more recently that you would just recommend to people watching this. This is a book you should check out. Ooh, I wish I, I, I should have brought my book over here. Um, so I've been into, so Bell Hooks, I really love Bell Hooks as an author um, and just as a um, just person, <laughs> she's just dope. Um, she has like a series of books like Teaching to Transgress is one book. Um, and then it's also like, she has like a series of books similar to that. And so I've been really like reading that because it does, it goes up, it talks about educating our children. Um, so I've been really trying to have different like viewpoints, um, you know, past and present of just learning more about like how we can um, definitely, you know, again, think creatively and reimagine um, like what our schools look like. So that's something that I've been reading recently um, that I definitely would recommend folks to read. Um, it just gives different views, you know, from a, a point of a, a Black feminist um, writer um, and author. Well, thank you for that, because uh, the friends that the foundation has are interested in that kind of content and, and learning and supporting our schools and, and know that if they are alumni from the 50s, the 60s, or 70s, depends, but, you know, things look so different and rethinking and reimagining is, is an part of, important part of how we build our schools going forward. What's your favorite Madtown hangout? <laughs> Other than your home, which you've probably spent a lot of time in over the last year like the rest of us. Yeah, my favorite Madtown hangout no longer exists oh. um, for various reasons but <laughs> I won't mention it. <laughs> but right now my favorite um, place to go is probably like Deluxe when they oh. reopen just because mm -hmm. I can get bottomless mimosas. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> like, I'm like, hey kids, how let's go eat lunch <laughs> and then walk around the square. So yeah. Yeah, I like that place too. Uh, this is the, the silliest of the questions. Did you get a pandemic puppy? Yes. <laughs> Her name is Mocha and it's oh. so funny um, because I have been, I'm not a dog person, never been really a dog person, love cats, definitely a cat lady. Um, and for years, like my son is obsessed with dogs. Like he was just like, when he was like two or three, he's just like, I'm going to be a puppy mom. I'm going to marry a puppy. And I'm just like, oh, okay, whatever you do you. And, you know, so like they've been asking for a puppy for a long time. And I'm just like, nah, mm -mm, mm -mm. and um, for Christmas, their, their paternal grandmother was like, hey, I got a present for you guys. And they're like, okay, go pick up the present. And it's a puppy. And I'm like, what am I going to do? <laughs> He's like, here's a puppy for y'all. And I'm just like, what am I going to do with this puppy? And then I was just like, but I really love this puppy. It's so cute. So yes, we did get a pandemic puppy for Christmas. <laughs> and what kind of puppy is Mocha? Mocha is a miniature schnauzer and miniature terrier mix. Oh my. So it's like perfect because she's hyper and it like, the kids now are just like, wah, wah, wah. and she's like, wah, wah. and I'm just like, you guys, I would close my door. <laughs> you guys can walk all together. <laughs> uh, awesome. Yeah. Um, any new hobbies, quirks, behaviors, anything during COVID that is, is new or different about you that might not have happened had it not been for this crazy last year? Yeah. So, um, I am nap queen. I love naps and I am really good at taking 15 minute naps um, like throughout my day. <laughs> I love naps. Um, however, since the pandemic, I have not been nap queen at all. She's like in the dungeon somewhere. <laughs> She's not taking naps. And it's not necessarily that I can't take the naps. I think it's just being at home all the time, like 
I don't know. It's just, I, I don't take naps anymore, which is definitely a, a new pandemic quirk because I am the, I, well, I would say I was the nap queen. So RIP to nap queen. <laughs> but it, it may be a skill that you rediscover during board of education meetings. Oh yeah. So just joking. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe after them. Yes, yes, definitely. Them. Big mm -hmm. long sleep after that. Um, <laughs> so of course, you know, Madison, you've got your Spartans, you got your Pergolders, you got your Lancers. So here is your chance to talk about why Regents are best. Wes is the best. <laughs> no Regent <laughs> for the blue and gold. <laughs> um, I, you know, we had our jokes back in the day, you know, like LaFollette was like laugh a lot and East was the least and, you know, like those kind of things, of sure. course, and West was the best because it rhymes. But um, no, I think that, you know, when I was at West, again, it's like kind of awkward because I had like, like two type of like experiences. You had the one of course, as a black girl, but then I also too, you just enjoyed because I was a, I played sports. I loved playing sports. I was like one of like the top athletes in Madison. Um, and so when it comes to Wes, I would say definitely, I would say, I don't know, like fostering like the education and sports together was like one of the best. Um, maybe. I mean, I think most people did really well across the city. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I really love West. My mom went to West. Um, you know, my friends all went to West. Like people in my neighborhood pretty much all went to West. So I just feel like West is the best. Yeah. Period. Well, before I turn it over to Mo, I'll just <laughs> put a plug to feature you through the Madison Public Schools Friends and Alumni Network. And we especially love multi-generational stories. Mm -hmm. and candid stories. We have a goal to make sure our current students see alumni who've gone on to do all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Success looks all kinds of ways. Uh, so we'd love to do that with you at some point. Mo, take it away and finish this up. Sure. Um, so before our, well, actually, as a point of personal privilege, you talked about, we talked about pandemic hobbies. I'm just going to ask, because during the pandemic, I started this whole little project, Bread and Justice. Uh, have you, did you start baking at all during the pandemic? Did you try your hand at any new cooking or baking that you hadn't done in the past? Um, No, but I, I'm i not a good baker. So I won't eat, like, even if I tried, I couldn't do well. But I support my daughters in baking. So they have taken up baking. Nice. And I'm literally just, you know, start the oven. Mom, can you get the whisk? <laughs> Mom, can you get the milk? Like I am that, I'm the runner. So I'm like, you know, yeah. you know, yes. But my daughters have started. 100%. Baking. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, anything else? So, so this will go to, you know, I mean, obviously this will be online, but specifically we'll share this out to our community of, of, of friends and supporters of the foundation. Anything else that you want people to know anything else you want to share um no not necessarily i just i just really hope that you know um i, I do truly hope that we do make sure that we do reimagine and recreate our schools um mm. and i think that is definitely going to be um not just the job of the board or administration but really the community and um and folks really stepping up and um, putting their input and making sure that they are also a part of this process um, because it really is a like we all need to come together to support our babies um, I call them our babies sorry <laughs> not all of them are babies but our children I should say um, yeah. but yes, I, I would say that that's probably like the last thing I would like to share so from personal experience I know that being an elected official is sometimes an exercise in manifesting your own hope. You know, um, can, there's a lot that can be frustrating. Um, and particularly this past year was a really rough year. Um, 
uh, for a multitude of reasons. What gives you hope about MMSD and about our community um, that, that leads you to, um, to feel optimistic for this next year? I would say what has given me hope is that the number of folks in the community that I've seen have really like shown up um, mm. and shown up in many different ways. Um, and it's not even just like millennials or like older millennials because I'm an older millennial, I guess. I'm like an 80s person, 80s baby or whatever, but. I'm there with you. I'm an yeah, old millennial. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, but our Generation Z, our, our young folks have really um, stepped up and really, not that they haven't in the past, but I feel like it's beautiful to see young folks really voice their opinions. And um, that does, like, that gives me hope because I know that, you know, as a next generation, because they will be our next generation leaders, right? And then even our children um, following them have also been a part of, you know, movements and been able to speak up and speak out. So um, those are the things that give me hope um, that, um, you know, from our community standpoint in the support and how um, folks have been really showing up for MMSD. Um, and, you know, support doesn't always look like, you know, positive support all the time, because I think that holding each other accountable, um, giving space for constructive criticism is also equally important than just always, um, you know, supporting, you know, what's going well. So I, I say that is to say, like, we're, we're going to get it. And I, I do have hope that we will. Um, so yes, that's what gives me hope about the schools in the community. It's so encouraging. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And we'll close with a thank you for the gift of your time today and for your service to this community on the Board of Education. Uh, I've been in this job just about five years and it is, I, I, people have no idea how many hours and what that really looks like. It's, it's a presumably a labor of love, but it's a lot of hard work. And uh, thank you for bringing your talents and experiences to the table. And we at the Foundation for Madison's Public Schools. Look forward to working with you and continuing to work with Mo uh, to fight for the best possible public schools. Have a great day. And again, love to talk with you again down the road and see how things are going. Absolutely, I would love that. I would love that. All right. Thank you, Mo, and goodbye, everyone. Thanks for your time. Bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye.